everyone. Welcome back to Homegrown Passion. I'm sure you guys have noticed me walking by this area here in the greenhouse that it's really wide. It's kind of dead space. We don't have anything here. And over the years, we thought maybe we could do some fodder here or do some strawberries. But we have a really good idea. So stay tuned to see what we're going to do. So I'm in Doug's shop and here's my idea. Deep barrel hydroponics. What do you think? What I want to do is take these barrels here and cut them in half so I have four of them and then I can put the perlite and the uh, vermiculite mixture in here and I want to grow carrots, parsnip, onions, bunching onions and beets. Even though we're a commercial greenhouse I would like you know how I always like to grow stuff for us so that's what I'm going to use that space for. So the first thing I need to do is cut this barrel in half. So I already did some measurements here to figure out what I needed to do. So between these two ribbons here, it's 10 inches, so 5 inches is half of that. So I marked a few of them here. So I'm going to go ahead and mark this all the way around so I can get this cut in half. Okay, got the line drawn here. Got it all marked away in half here. So the next thing I need to do is drill a hole right on that line. So now I'm going to drill a hole here on the line so I have a place to put the saber saw blade into so we can cut this thing in half. There we go, all ready to go. So I like to use a saber saw for a project like this because I can adjust the speed, how fast the slow it goes. Because if it gets going too fast, it kind of scares me. That's why I'm not using a sawzall. You know, when you put one of those in, it bounces all over the place and that's not, not good for me. So I'd like to use this little guy. So you probably noticed it was bouncing around way too much, so I speeded the blade up, and now it's so much easier. There we go. So I still have to cut the other barrel in half, but I wanted to show you real quick here what else we need to do. We need to drill a hole in here, and we have a three quarter inch grommet, and we're gonna put that in here with the pipe, and then that pipe is gonna go to our discharge line because these are gonna be uh, drained to waste. We're not gonna recycle the water, so we're gonna use the same formula that I'm using for my tomato and pepper plants, and it's just gonna be piped over to these guys, go in to the top, and then discharge out the bottom. Okay, got the four holes drilled in each one of these, so now I'm going to load these back up into our mule and take them back to my head house because I, you know, I have the big sinks back there because I'm going to get these all washed out and sanitized and cleaned up. So then we can put them in place, get them piped together, and I can do some seeding and get it all ready to plant. So normally I would wash these barrels outside with a hose, but it's winter time, everything's frozen outside, and I get really cold outside from working in the greenhouse and nice warm, I hate going out there. So luckily I have these sinks back here, and look, it fits in here perfectly, and I can wash it off with my sprayer here and get them totally washed up, and then we'll go on to the next step. got all the barrels washed up and ready to go and while they're drying I thought I would get the seeding done here so I already had the carrots and the beets in stock and I didn't have any parsnips or onions so of course this time of year January I was excited about gardening so all the stores have all their seeds out so I zipped over and got some onions and some parsnips so I can do that also so I got the four barrels and I got my oasis cubes here ready to go and I'm gonna go ahead and plant these the carrots are gonna be really easy because they're pelleted and the beets aren't too bad to do but I'm not sure about um, parsnips or onions I've never really planted those before so this should be interesting 
So the reason why I wanted to do the deep barrels is I wanted to see if I can get the carrots really nice and long and big. Because last time I did them in the betel buckets and they didn't go as big as I had hoped they would be. So that's what I'm going to do with that. That's why we decided to do the bigger barrels. And I'm going to plant 24 of each of the different varieties here that I want to seed. Because I don't think I can put 24 in each barrel, but I don't, I'm not sure about the germination rate. So I want to make sure everything's germinated and I have enough to go in there. So I've never started onions from seeds before. I've always gotten onion sets to plant outside. So let's see how big these seeds are. I'm sure most of you guys know how big they are, but I don't. Let's see if I can get this open without spilling. Oh yeah, these guys are nice and little. I think I'm going to get my tweezers. So for the onion seeds, I'm going to put a couple in each hole and then I can thin them just to make sure I have all that I need. Okay, got the onions done, so the next thing I'm going to do are the parsnips. Never grew them before, bought them at the farmer's market before, so let's see what these seeds look like. Oh, these are cool little seeds, nice little flat things. I think I'm going to use the tweezers again. See, those cool looking. So again, I'm doing 24, and hopefully I get good germination, and if I have to thin them, I will do that. Okay, now for the carrots. These will be easy since they're pelleted. Okay, last I'm gonna do are the beets. I've done these before in the NFT channels and actually beets do grow. They don't grow nice and pretty round. They're a little funky looking, but they do grow in the hydroponics. So I'm hoping they'll do really well in the, these deep barrels. Nice big seed, easy to plant. Okay, so now I'm ready to put these into the control tunnel and hopefully they germinate quickly because the parsnip said anywhere between 14 and 21 days. I'm not used to that long, but hopefully in the heat over there, they'll do a little bit faster. But at least I have each one of these in separate cubes. So if one doesn't germinate fast enough, I can get the other ones planted. So you saw me drill the holes here for the discharge line. So I got the grommet in here with my three quarter inch pipe and I put a union on here. So when I'm done at the end of the season and I want to take them apart, I can just unscrew this and take it apart from the pipe that's going to be the discharge line laying on the ground. So it'd be a lot easier. And just remember when you're putting things on, remember to use your primer cleaner and then glue it. Otherwise it doesn't stick really good. So the pipe goes all the way through the barrel it goes into the inside of it here. And then I put a 90 on it so the when it does fill up with water that the perlite doesn't get caught in the discharge line, just like the betel buckets out there in the main greenhouse. Okay, so now I'm ready to carry these out into the greenhouse and get them filled up with perlite. So you know what I'm thinking? I should have did this this morning. The sun comes out today and now it's like yeah, 85, 90 degrees in here, even though the environmentals are on. So the next thing we're going to do is put the discharge lines out of each one of these together and get them all the way down to where the discharge line is for the tomatoes there so it gets out of the greenhouse here and I don't have a big mess like I used to try to do when I had grow bags here. So this is going to be drained to waste so that's why it's going down to the tomato waste line. And here's my nutrient line that feeds the tomatoes so we're going to have another drop come here. You see the cap there. Have it come down this post here, go across these four barrels and then we'll put the spaghetti lines in. And usually I have two admitters per Beto bucket. I think I'm probably going to do four or six. I'm not sure yet. We'll see how much it waters it and gets it wet before the uh, seeds germinate. Because I'm going to put all the growing medium in here and get it all moist and ready for them to go in. And we'll see if it stays moist enough or not. Now the next thing I need to do is put my mask on and fill these up with the perlite and see how much one bag fills one of these barrels up.
that was surprising. I didn't think it would take a whole bag to fill one of these barrels up. I thought maybe a half a bag or three quarters. My judgment was way off. But luckily, if you guys saw my last video, I won the auction and I have tons of perlite now. So remember when you're doing perlite, turn on your exhaust fan so it sucks all the dust out of here. And I also wanted to mention that even though it seems like a lot of perlite in these barrels here, I'm growing root crops. So when I pull the carrots out or the parsnips or the onions, it's going to bring all the roots and everything with it. So I'm going to be able to use this growing medium numerous times so it's not going to be wasted just on a one-time deal. Okay, so I got the water line installed here. Did a T up there at the top dropped it down, put a shutoff valve on it, which I like shutoff valves on everything. Comes down, put a 90, and it goes across underneath the channel, so then I can put the spaghetti tubes into here, into my growing buckets. Did a little work on the discharge line. Gotta finish that, but that's another thing that I can wait on because my plants haven't even sprouted yet, so we're doing good. So this is the three quarter inch water line we're using. We mostly use this out in the high tunnel, but for this application, it's working really good. So I'll take the rest of this roll and put it back out in the high tunnel. So when I do my greenhouse update videos, I definitely keep you guys updated on our deep barrel hydroponics. And when we plant our plants in here, get the spaghetti tubes in, and just any kind of progress that's going on. I hope you guys like today's video on the deep barrel hydroponics. We're always trying something different here in the greenhouse. So like always, leave me questions, comments, and suggestions down below. Don't forget to subscribe, and we'll see you guys next video.